श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम दिस टाइम इन दिस रिट्रीट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी वन ऑफ द वेरी डिफरेंट टेक्स्ट एट्रीब्यूटेड टू भगवान रमण महर्षि भगवान रमण महर्षि एंड निसर्ग दत्त महाराज फ्रॉम बॉम्बे दे आर द अल्टीमेट वर्ड्स ऑन स्पिरिचुअल authority ultimate word beyond this there is nothing more to be known so after we study this we go home stop studying everything and enjoy life so you can start right now itself how this text has come into existence there was a great great scholar he wrote a commentary or translation from sanskrit into tamil and instructions were given by a great master to the grahasthas like you all and in that so many things go ahead and a point comes where the upadesha instruction about life are to be given so when this point came that great scholar stopped he said i have no authority to teach anybody friends we all have right to study and know the truth but we all do not have the right to teach the truth this is what happens many a times when an authorized person takes up the job only confusion and frustration comes up see so that great scholar he knew about it and therefore he decided that i cannot write so he approached bhagwan ramana maharshi and bhagwan ramana maharshi was requested sir this is the theme and instructions are to be given to those who are engaged in karma those who are engaged in activities those who are engaged in the so called religious life now here i'll take a little diversion and tell you something very important our life is lived at three levels first is that level when we take this world as real and we take ourselves to be the body for such people different prescriptions are given the second type of people are those who are constantly talking about last life this life next life going to heaven after death for them there is a different set of instructions and there is a third category of people who would neither take themselves to be the body or don't take this world real nor they are interested to go to heaven or hell they are concerned about about their identity as to who i am to this third type of people the spiritual instructions are given so those who are engaged in this world taking this world to be real body to be real for them the dharma shastra the religious instructions are given that you should serve elders you should not insult anybody you should take care of your children you should study properly you should not cheat others nor get cheated this is dharma shastra 
it is something like you know a child who is just going to school and then he has to be taught so everything is only concepts concepts cannot be taught so we take support of something suppose the concept is 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 now 1 is just a concept what a child understands what is 1 so what the teacher does the child likes chocolate so the teacher takes the chocolate in the class now the children are happy come on today we are going to get chocolates so the interest of the teacher is to teach the concept 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 but this they will never understand see Therefore, the chocolate is taken and that is shown. So, the chocolate becomes a support to indicate the concept of one which has nothing to do with the chocolate. One could be chocolate, one could be a child, one could be a fool, one could be a wise, anything one. One is just a concept. So, for that level, different type of educational materials are used. Now, if somebody is uh, grown up and goes to the college, that time also if he has to study 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, will he say, I get few chocolates, then I can study 1 plus No. Now, you are grown up. So for them, the education method is different. See, friends, and those who have understood the basis of concepts, then they want to go beyond the concepts. So those who want to go beyond concepts, for them is the instruction given in this book. See. And for that, like you know, where in Lodium I was talking, this camp is like going to a gym, not going to a hospital. In hospital, only unhealthy, miserable, disgusted people go. Healthy people don't go. <coughs> of course, doctors go. You know, because they are unhealthy. A doctor never likes a healthy person. So, <coughs> this truth has to be revealed. And for that, we have to know the basics. Basics are, when we are identified with the body, taking this world as real, we have to be active. First principle. Second thing, if we become active, do the things, our I becomes very strong. So the second step we have to take, dissolve this I. Then the third step is required to be taken. We are a biggest problem for ourselves. So we have to be self-disciplined. Third thing. And all the three things, karma, devotion and yoga, they are meant to work on the mind. Up to here is one part of this text. And thereafter, the teacher takes a totally different approach. And that approach is so subtle, so solid. That all what we have studied earlier, you just can throw it away. No need at all. See? This is how is this particular text developed. So, <clears throat> the story goes in that particular text which was translated in Tamil. There were great uh, grastas engaged in doing the Yajna Karma. They were sitting together, Indra Yaswaha Idan Namama, Aruna Yaswaha Idan Namama, the fire is burned in between and then they will be offering the things. Those who are engaged in Karma Kanda, they cannot give it up. For them, doing something or the other is the only obsession. And that obsession is so strong that even they start doing love. Such people, they fall in love. They don't rise in love. Because they are doing. See? Similarly, they start doing meditation. 
So earlier they were suffering in the society, in the world. Therefore they go for the meditation camp. And there also they suffer because of meditation. So earlier they were suffering because of the world. Now they suffer because of meditation. Suffering is common. See friends. The reason is they want to do something, do something, do something. So there was a group of great grasthas. And they were doing the yajna karma. And you all know, I don't know here, but normally this is the tradition. These men are engaged in doing the karma. They will be offering the things in the fire, but they will not do anything. The whole arrangement has to be made by the wife. See, I see this every day in uh, Arvind's house. That poor Amma, she does everything. He comes, just starts eating. <laughs> exactly the same way. They will be sitting and those poor ladies, they will be making all the preparations. And one day it so happened, when they were busy in their yajna karma, all these girls were attracted towards someone. There was a young, handsome, attractive personality and all the wives of all these rishis, they just started walking towards him. And when they wanted something, where is the matchbox? Now there is no lady to give matchbox. So they found what happened, where they are wrong. And then they started searching here and there. And they found that all the ladies have gone after one uh, young man. So they became very angry. And they wanted to curse. But in front of the young man's knowledge and wisdom, all their curses were totally important. Nothing could be done. And then they said, who are you? What is this you have? And then that great master was none other than Lord Shiva. He was in the disguise of a young man. And then he gives instructions to these grahasthas. This is how the story traditionally goes. See? So, those who are lazy, for them this is not. Those who are busy, it is for them. See friends, many of us have got this funny notion. When I get time, I will do it. You will get never time. You have to find out time. You never get time in life. See friends. And we all suffer never because of shortage of time. We all suffer because of excess of time. See? See the old people, why they suffer? Excess of time. Ab jau tu jau ka baad mein. <laughs> Therefore, the text begins with this. Now something about Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi. Who was this Bhagwan Ramana Maharshi? There is nobody known as his guru. When he was studying in class 8 or 9, it so happened that somebody in the family, he was staying with his uncle at Madurai or somewhere, and somebody in the family died. So they put the dead body and they were tying it down to carry it away. So this young child in class 9 or so, he saw hey, what happened. Died means what? So he said, let me see what is the meaning of death. He came to his room. He lied down on his bed. And be attentive. He started playing. Death, death. Like the small children play. Home, home. Brother and sister, they become husband and wife. They start playing home, home. They don't become husband and wife. They play. Exactly the same way. He started playing death, death. And he lied down on the bed. And his body became so quiet as if rigor mortis is set in. Absolutely dead. And he was still, you see, the body is lying there. I am still there. Nothing happened to me. So who am I then? Friends, this is 
the beginning of the real spiritual journey. In one place, in one college, after my talk was over, one young student asked me this question. Swamiji, I got a question. I said, ask. He said, who am I? So I asked him, should I tell you the truth or bluff? He said, for a change, tell the truth. So I told him, you are a fool of the first order. When I told him, you are a fool, he said, do you mean Ramana Maharshi was a fool? Because it is his path, who am I? Koham. I said, no, Ramana Maharshi is not a fool. He did not ask me. You asked me. <laughs> I am not replying him. Friends, till such time, we take ourselves to be body. This question is redundant. When I take myself to be body, I am man, woman, young, old, intelligent, not intelligent, beautiful, awful. See? Where is the question? The question comes, even theoretically, you take yourself to be someone other than the body. You may not have experience, doesn't matter. Must take this just for the fun of it. If I am not the body, then the question comes. Because the whole edifice of our personality is completely shattered. Because after I take myself to be body, then only thereafter I am husband, wife, brother, father, mother, sister, Indian, non-Indian, Hindu, Muslim, everything is possible. Only after body identification. The moment it is dropped, where it has gone, then the question comes, then who am I? See friends, it is for this purpose, our scriptures give us first step, the path of karma. What is the path of karma? We are all expert in blaming others for our miseries. You ask a child, why are you miserable? Because of mom. Immediately. You ask a husband, why are you disturbed? Because of her. We are expert in blaming others. Net result, when I blame you all for my miseries, what I will do? I will try to improve you. Knowing well, God has failed. Will I be able to improve you? But that will be my struggle and this is how we go the wrong way. Then the teacher out of love for us, Bhagavan Shankaracharya writes in his commentary, the Shruti Mata, the Veda, the Upanishad, they have so much love and concern for the seeker of truth. If you can imagine that you have millions of parents, only one of you, but that one person has millions of parents. How much love that one child will have, much more than is the love of the scriptures for the evolution of a seeker. See friends, therefore, the seeker want to help us. And for that purpose, the law of karma is introduced. So we are all told right from childhood, do karma, do karma. And that karma, karma has gone so wrongly in our head, there is no meaning to that karma, karma. Once I was in Europe with my friend, somewhere in Switzerland or somewhere, and we went to one restaurant for having tea, coffee. So my friend said, Swamiji, let us go to that. It's a very good restaurant. We went there, very beautiful setup and all that. And um, in Switzerland, they have got a very funny way of thing. They keep the small uh, fire in the center on the table. And then they put the um, cheese. It is a melting cheese. And then like we take dal, like that you take the bread piece and in the melted cheese you eat. That is the fashion there. So we went there. So um, the name of the 
restaurant was karma. So he said, Mr. Swamiji, what should I order? I said, you cannot order anything. You will get a prarabdha. <laughs> See, friend. Karma, karma, karma. Don't give too much importance to this dumb thing called as karma. See? So, how we get caught up in the karma? In the wrong way. And how we should come out of this karma business is the first part of this text. So, the Lord Shiva, in the form of a young uh, sadhu, instructed those grastas. Keep this picture in front of your mind. All the grastas who are busy with doing the karma, somebody has got the, the spoon to offer, somebody has got the havan to, the, the uh, samidha to be offered, and they are different type of clothes and all kinds of makeup, and they are sitting for the karma. This kind of all the people they were sitting, and Lord Shiva started giving them the instruction. Kartuhu agyaya prapyate phalam karma kim param karma jadam. First question is raised. Karma, karma, karma you talk about. This karma is jada, inert. See friends, when I take a knife, whether I cut uh, an apple or I cut somebody's throat, neither the knife nor the hand has anything to do. It is jada. See, Karma jadam. See friends. Now, why karma is jada? Kartuhu agaya karm, karmasya phalam prapyate. Karmanaha phalam prapyate. By the authority of the law of karma, kartuhu agaya, by the law of the authority of karma, whatever you do, the results are determined. You have no choice. First step. Where we get caught up in karma is here. We do something. And then we have expectation. This particular type of result I should get. And if we do not get that, we become miserable. See friends. Like one girl the other day asked me in Bombay just before coming. Swamiji, you told me, do your best and you will get everything. I did my best, but I didn't get anything. I said, your best was not equal to the required best. <laughs> you should match with the requirement. My best is that I do, do, don't do anything. No. Therefore, when we do something, how many factors are involved in the fructification of that karma? See, First is our efforts. Second is the situation around, see, like we came over here. Before our reaching here, how many factors have gone into operation? Just imagine it has not happened. While coming, suppose there was suddenly earthquake. Then, oh, we have decided to do this, you know, camp and it has not happened. I think because of the camp, next time we should not have it. <laughs> see? So many factors go into fructification of any karma. See, friends, there was a good friend, there is a good friend of mine from UK. He only sponsors me for my visit there. A Britisher, very nice person. Very rare person, rather. So he told me, Swamiji, uh, I'll be going for the Mahakumbha Mela, which comes once in 144 years. So nobody can have it twice in life, only once. So he says, Swami, you also come. I said, okay. I didn't know also that, so I decided I'll go. He came from UK to Delhi and I already reached. He landed and he got a phone call from his daughter that Mama is admitted to ICU. She is discovered to have cancer. And doctor is putting her some kinds of medicine. He just landed and he got the phone. By the next flight, he again went back. You may plan. 
You may think I will do, I will do that. See, therefore, here the teacher says, Kartuhu agaya karmam karma phalam prapyate. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan in the 18th chapter says, Adishthanam number one, Tatha karta, the third, Karanam cha prutak vidam, Vividha cha prutak cheshta, and Daivam cha ivatra panchamam, Sharira vang manor biyat karma prarabhate naraha, Nyayam va viparitam va tasete panchahetavaha, Tatraiva satikartaram, Atmanam, everything, whether you do good or bad, the five factors are involved. Adishthanam, the body. Without body, you can't do the karma. Tatha karta, the sense of doership. Karanam, the instruments. Prasakvidam, cheshta, different efforts. And finally, the final touch of the divine sanction. See, friends. Once we accept this principle, we will keep on doing what is required to be done. But we will never do anything for getting happiness in life. Now be very attentive. This is the foundation of understanding the real meaning of Karma Yoga. See, everything that we do in our life is only for getting happiness. Whatever we do. Just observe your own life. You all got married. For what? I will not ask the next question. <laughs> See, friends. We get married for happiness. Then we get divorced for happiness. Then we come to know the first one was better. <laughs> Anything we do in our life, somebody observes Ekadashi for happiness, somebody eats a lot only for happiness. In short, all our activities of life, they are aimed at getting happiness. This is where we go wrong. Stop that. Then, if you do that, karma jadam, you will end up in jadatva. Disgust, frustration. See, you, you must have seen many people have this common complaint. I have done so much for everybody, but nobody likes me. Who asked you to do? See, one example I gave the other day. There is one lady, she was telling me and crying. I said, look here, mama, I don't like crying people. If you have to smile, don't cry. If you have to cry, go to bathroom. Your makeup is not complete in the bathroom unless you wear a smile before you come out. See, the world has sufficiently disgusting faces. Don't add. <laughs> Narayana. So, she said, um, Swamiji, my father died when I was hardly 18, 19, two sisters and a brother. No other source of income. I did everything for them, educated them, got them married, got them settled. But now when I go to their house, they tell me, Didi, please don't come to our house. Our husband, our wife do not like it. And thereafter, Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati. See, I have done so much for them. Why they are like that? Nobody wants me. They want to go away from me. I nearly said, I also want to go away. <laughs> Friends, who wants a disgusting face around? Remember one basic principle. Whatever we do, nobody needs it. It is our necessity that we do anything in life. Like the food is there on the table. Is the food requesting you? Hey, please come on, eat me, yaar. I am waiting for you. No. It is our need that we go and eat. Exactly the same way. Whatever we are doing in life, it is our need. Your whole attitude towards life will change. If you don't do that, karmata jadam. Therefore, be attentive. Yoginaha karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye. 
karma is not done for getting something in this world karma is done for purification of our mind and the purification of mind means we have to understand recognize be aware who is prompting us into activity who is prompting sham or kaam when we do something why we are doing because i want that calm desire or sham i am supposed to do that see the difference so when i am talking to you i am not obliging you see friends it is my need if you all walk away am i going to talk to the furniture or what even if i am mad see friends this attitude in life must be changed it is for this purpose bhagwan says karma kim param if this karma is not undertaken properly this karma will lead us to the jadatva like the example i give gave people do so many things and they are frustrated in their old life i have done so much for my children but they don't want me something i'll tell you there are not many kids here who wants whom parents want the children or the children want the parents think when you people get married if the child is not born that unborn child is that child miserable it is the parents who want the children it is your need come to recognize this therefore whatever we are doing is okay do it and relax see friends but you know our indians they are unique creature in the world when a child is born one is the child that is born second is the mother that is born the child grows the mother never grows even if the child is uh, hardly uh, 70 years old yet that 90 year old mother has a complaint so i mean he doesn't take care of his life or right? he is oldly enough see friends don't get too much involved in this world whatever we are doing it is our need therefore we are doing therefore this attitude of obligation must be changed we do it is our need see then desire will not be the factor which is operating in our life now how to do this thing desire less activity many of us have got this funny understanding when bhagavad gita says karmanne vadhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachan what we misunderstand is this do your karma but don't expect anything in return when you do something something will definitely come whether you want or you don't want see so what is the meaning the meaning is very simple be very attentive karma is done in the present result of the karma comes in the future if you are imagining after completing the karma thereafter i will get the result and every karma has got a different gestation length some karma will give immediate result some karma will take a lot of time and if we are imagining i get that then only i will be happy so what we are unknowingly doing is postponing our own happiness in the future period of time those who postpone their happiness they can never be happy so what is the meaning of this mantra karmanne va adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana don't do anything to get happiness but do everything to express happiness see so is it possible one youngster asked me this question in india he said because of you people and geeta tells do your job and don't expect any karma phala therefore india is not progressing i said as if india is studying bhagavad gita or what then i told i said look here 
what you have understood let us try to understand in comparison we all function in our life under the pressure of desires is it not whatever we do we are propelled by the desires now see the great masters who lived in this world they functioned under zero desire level they have nothing to achieve in this world bhagwan krishna says naiva tasya krute nartha na krute neva kashchana they have nothing to gain anything in this world yet they are working and you see the total production we function under the compulsion of desire what we have achieved in life and all the great masters they lived without any desire and see what is their achievement in life if we simply want to read the reported work of swami vivekananda our life will not be enough and how many years he lived 120 years no his productive period was hardly 18 20 years see friends therefore this notion that because we don't have desire we will become lethargic no what is required in this life is not the desire pressure but inspiration and how it can be done how can we function under inspiration the second mantra tells kruti maho dadhau patana karanam phalam ashashvatam gati nirodakam if we are functioning under the influence of desire then what happens kruti maho dadhau patana karanam now here there is another very simple and deep uh, principle do the karma you get karma phala because of that karma phala you are again born when you are again born again you will do the karma phala then again that karma phala you will be born and in this manner punarapi jananam punarapi maranam punarapi janani jathare shayanam will continue it will not stop see it is something like egg first or the bird first because of the karma the karma phala has come or because of the karma phala we are again born what is the truth without inquiring this thing we continue doing last life this life next life friends please grasp this point the most important on the spiritual journey when something is said we must know what is the moral of the story you all know the story of savitri and satyavan Savitri was a great pativrata, devoted to the husband. It is just a story, huh? <laughs> Don't start thinking about yourself. I think they are talking about me. No. <laughs> so that Savitri was a great pativrata, and uh, her husband died. So she fought with Yama, Lord Death. You can imagine. when a woman start fighting yama was defeated he said okay baba take him away the best way to disagree with them is to agree immediately so he gave away so he she brought her husband back to life the moral of the story if the wife is really dedicated to the husband she can even defeat death that is the moral of the story but if you ask me <laughs> this depends upon what you think you can be saved from death but not from the wife <laughs> moral of the story in the same manner when we blame others we are told stop blaming others we have to be squarely responsible for everything that happens in our life stop blaming others so how to do that therefore our scriptures tell us see one day one husband came and started complaining swami ji my wife is so terrible etc etc now when he came should i advise him in such a manner 
that the gap between the husband and wife should widen or he should live there happily with the same wife without changing as a mahatma as a teacher as an advisor as a counselor i should tell him in such a manner that they don't break is it not so what i told him i said look here do you know why your wife is torturing you yes in the last life you have tortured her and she was praying to the lord oh lord in the next life give me the same husband then i will take the revenge <laughs> and therefore she is with you from the last life therefore the hindu married ladies they do that karwa chauth it is meant for tying down for seven lives not one life <laughs> where will you run away जहा मैं जाता हूं वही चली आती है सो देन सो बिकॉज यू टॉर्चर ऑर्डर इन लास्ट लाइफ बिकॉज ऑफ दैट कर्म यू आर सफरिंग इन दिस लाइफ बट आई डोंट रिमेंबर यू मे नॉट रिमेंबर द ट्रूथ इज दिस नाउ व्हाट शुड आई डू प्लीज टेल मी नाउ बिहेव प्रॉपरली विथ हर अदरवाइज नेक्स्ट लाइफ अगेन शी इज गोइंग टू कैच यूर नेट नाउ सी द नेट रिजल्ट net result he will change his direction from the wife to himself so he stop blaming her and second thing his quality of life towards her will change this is all friends and then we are told next life means what we existed before this body was born we are existing in this body and when this body dies in the next life we have another body so where did we die this is the purpose of law of karma just to bring to our notice neither we are born nor we grow nor we die the like the bodies come on us and disappear we are the same now take in this life first a baby body came on us the baby body disappeared then the teenage body came on us the teenage body disappeared then the middle age body came on us that body disappeared the old age body has come it will also disappear you will be the same it is for this purpose the law of karma is told but when we don't know this thing then we are told kruti mahodadha upatana karanam phalam ashashvatam whatever you get it is not permanent it will be temporary and therefore gati nirodhakam then we will be whole life lost only karma 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 how long now one more important point about karma karma is action plus sense of doership is equal to karma without the sense of doership karma does not happen like a paper printed properly but if it is not authenticated by the right signature it cannot become a document it cannot become a deed it has to be authenticated exactly the same way action plus doership is karma so till such time doership is the prominent factor in our life we will not be liberated from the karma and then we keep on suffering gati nirodhakam and thus we will never fulfill the purpose of our life purpose of our life is not to be born again and again and again no the only purpose is to be a source of joy to the whole world see what is the purpose of the flower emit fragrance that's it no other purpose how long as long as you can similarly the purpose of our life that we are the source of joy cheer happiness to the whole universe only for that purpose god created human beings 
except in the disney movies have you seen a buffalo looking at other buffalo and giving a smile no human beings alone can laugh animals cannot laugh here you will see many wild animals will be coming around don't go and uh, uh, talk to them ubdesh sir <laughs> you may smile at them bigam error na ve animals cannot smile human beings don't smile so those who sm don't smile bhagwan will say i am sorry dear it is my mistake i'll correct in the next life you are in the right place so gati nirodhakam now to come out of this to so be attentive come out of the catch of karma means giving up the sense of doership see friends don't stop activities in life we have to remain active till the last moment never never retire in life if you have nothing to do just go in the morning running to reach nowhere but keep busy keep active in the old day the most wrong thing that happens is we become lethargic we are not active then sometime we go to the bathroom and sleep and then fall down and the pelvic bone breaks and there after it cannot be repaired and then we keep on suffering and others are waiting marta bhi nahi <laughs> see friends keep yourself busy active throughout life any machine which is constantly running remains functional you must have seen the other day i went with somebody and uh, family our car was you know just parked for two months we were out of uh, this place and i just started and we saw no see the engine is becoming very hot two months only the car was not used and after that you use again it start showing colors exactly the same way don't do anything in your life for few months lethargy will creep in and lethargy the worst kind of disease never be lethargic in life be dynamic so remaining diamond dynamic and not having ego or doership how it is possible is it possible the teacher gives the technique ishwar arpitam mechaya kritam चित्त शोधक मुक्ति साधक फर्स्ट टेक्निक ईश्वर अर्पित वेनेवर वी डू एनीथिंग एज एन ऑफरिंग टू द लॉर्ड इट इज डन परफेक्टली नाउ यू कैन सी हियर द ऑल्टर दिस पीपल हैव मेड सी आई वॉज जस्ट ऑब्जर्विंग एटलीस्ट नाइन हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी एट टाइम्स दे हैव चेंज द वॉट यू कॉल द क्लॉथ अबाउ no it should be like that no it should be like that it should be like that so even 1 mm distance here and no it is not right they'll put it in go there and from there look you again come back it is for god therefore it must be perfectly done ishwar arpitam so whenever we offer anything to the lord it is not just thrown Like you must have seen some pandit ji when they do puja, no 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 no. Ishwar arpitam, every karma, every action must be done perfectly well. Means what? Don't seek happiness from action. Express happiness through action. so when these ammas were doing this altar do you think they were miserable no they were doing it so happily it should look perfect it should look beautiful ishwar arpita so whenever we offer anything to the lord it means perfection is the sign on that action number 1 second thing when we are doing for the lord something like you know they have made so many designs and everything 
that cloth. Will we take the same cloth what we have used for wiping the floor and the same cloth you put in on that put the God? No. It has to be clean, neat, unused. See? In this manner, whatever, whatever is done, it should have perfection, cleanliness, beauty, whatever you do. Ishwara Arpita. Discover joy in action. Don't discover joy or seek joy from action. Ishwara Arpita. And then Nechaya Grutam. No Ichaya Grutam. Ichha desire. Whenever we do something, why we are doing? Because I want that. Instead of I want as the propelling force in our life, let us have. This is done for the joy of the Lord, not for us. See, friends, when we go to the temple, are we going to the temple out of fear? Are we going to the temple or to the Lord for fulfilling our desire? Or we are going to the Lord only out of pure love? Whenever anything is done out of your love, there can never be frustration in life. If love leads to frustration, love was an action. But if love doesn't lead to frustration, then love is a noun. See friends, the mother has love for the child. One day one mother asked me this question, I was staying with them. Swamiji, morning 4 o'clock I give you tea. I said, yes, thank you very much. No, that time I give coffee to my son also. He is studying for 12th standard. So, for both of you, I prepare and give. No, I give you because I love you. I give you to my son because I love him. Now, what is the difference between my love for you and for my son? It was the question. I said... Your love for me is pure and perfect. Your love for your son is out of expectation. Suppose, I know it will not happen, suppose your son gets married to someone whom you don't want. Then, suppose your son doesn't take care of you in the old age, will your love remain? That love which leads to Frustration is attachment, asakti. That love which doesn't lead to attachment is pure love. Therefore, Ishwara Arpitam. Love for the sake of the love. One uh, girl asked me, Swamiji, I always get confused with you. I said, that's very good and I am successful. <laughs> she said, sometimes I feel that you are my brother, sometimes I feel you are my father, sometimes I feel you are my grandfather, sometimes I feel you are my pal, friend. I don't know what should I call you. So I told her a Hindi song. Pyaar ko pyaar hi rehne do rishto ke naam na do. Let love remain as a love, don't label it with any relationship. Love without relationship is pure love. Relationship happens when there are two. In absolute one, there is no relationship. See, those of you who have studied um, statistics, there, there is a, you calculate this um, um, relation co coefficient. So suppose there are two variables, x, y, x1 to x, n, y1 to y, n. If x and y, they are not equal, the coefficient will be plus minus 1 in between that range. But if x1 is equal to y1, x2 is equal to y2, and then what will be the coefficient? 1. Because in 1, there is no relationship. See, friends. Ishwarar Pitam Nechayakratam. It is something like this. When I get a scratching to my nose or scratching to my head, will the head tell the hand, 
Thank you, dear. You are scratched. See? And if my tongue is beaten by my teeth, will the tongue say, we have to go to the dentist, two fellows will be removed? No. Because there may be perception of differences, but there is no sense of differentiation. We breathe. Is the breathing happening or we are doing? It is just happening. I am tired of breathing, enough of breathing every day. What is this? <laughs> no. In the same manner, when love happens, you don't carry the burden of love. See, friends. Therefore, Ishvara Arpitam Nechayakritam. As a result of this, what will happen? Chitta Shodhakam. Chitta, your mind will be purified. Be attentive. Impurity in the mind is what? See? It is something like this. Take an example. One day somebody put a garland like this and one uh, petal happened to go and land in my beard. It remained like this as you can see now. I don't know this. It's matching wet with the white. <laughs> so, it, so one small little girl she came, Swamiji, there is something uh, bad on your uh, beard. I said, what is that? Remove slowly. Don't pluck. It is not a wig, okay? <laughs> so she slowly took out that. Show me what it is. Oh, it is not dirty thing. It is a petal. Be attentive. In the beard, other than beard, anything is there is impurity, is it not? Sometime while taking food it happens. The grain of rice lands on my beard. So, hey, there is something wrong in this. Remove that. So you remove that. What is rice. Is it dirt? something bad or what? In my plate? Am I eating dirt? And in that operation, one uh, hair is sacrificed. And it lands in that. Oh, there is something dirty. Do you mean there is a dirt on my face or what? So what is dirt? When other than that particular thing, anything else is the dirt, be attentive. In the mind, other than mind, anything else is, is the dirt. What are the other things in the mind? Thoughts, desires, anger, Greed, frustration, jealousy, vengeance, bitterness. This is the dirt. The likes, the dislikes. Let the mind be only mind. Chitta Shodhakam. Be attentive. Thought free mind is consciousness. See? Wife less husband is man. Is the man and the husband two? They are one. But that man, under the influence of the wife, starts behaving miserably. In the same manner, mind is consciousness. But when the mind carries the burden of the thoughts, it is called as mind. Chitta Shodakam. Therefore, mind, when it stops entertaining any theme, That pure mind is like a mirror. A mirror reflects everything, rejects nothing. At the same time, 
retains nothing. Suppose a beautiful girl goes and stands before the mirror. The mirror will not say, hey, hang around a little longer, yeah, don't go. No. And when an oldie like me goes, the mirror doesn't, hey, hato, next. No. When our mind is of that quality, name dveshosti na priyaha, don't create friends and enemies in this world. See, friends, Chitta Shodakam. This is the purpose of karma. So whenever something is done, as if it is done for the sake of the Lord, perfect. It will not be somehow finished. See? And as a result, it is Chitta Shodakam, mind will become pure. And Mukti Sadhanam, this Pure mind alone is the way to the ultimate. Our mind is like a bridge on the river. Can anybody construct a house on the bridge? Bridge is meant for going in both the directions. Either go this way or go this way. No, 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 I like very much on the bridge. No, you can't. In the same manner, mind is a bridge between the matter on one side and consciousness on the other side. So by this mind, we go to the matter or we have the option to merge in the consciousness. So when the mind is no more entertaining the material priorities, the mind is free to merge in the consciousness. In Amruta Bindu Upanishad, have we studied here? Amruta Bindu? No. We have studied? Good. So in Amruta Bindu Upanishad, it is said, Mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yoho bandhaya vishaya saktam muktam nirvishayam smritam. Mind alone is the cause of bondage and liberation. When the mind is extrovert and getting lost in the objectivity, that mind becomes the cause of bondage. But when the same mind is no more entertaining objectivity as the priority, the same mind is the cause for liberation. Mukti Sadhakam. Therefore, the whole thought, to summarize what it is said, that karma is done not for achievement outside or having the ego, I have done, I have done that, but it is meant for purification of the mind. If this is not achieved, then we will be carrying the burden of karma throughout our life and suffer silently. Such people who are too much workaholics, they never like to go to satsang. The reason being, be attentive, last thought. In satsanga when we come, all our wrong notions are hammered. And then one is disgusted with oneself. Oh God, that means my whole life I was living the wrong way. Who wants to accept it? So it is like a cat drinking the milk. Close the eyes and drink the milk so that nobody sees. We lead our life in the fool's paradise. Therefore, friends, the highest spiritual practice is satsanga. Reading one book by yourself, one unit of spirituality. Going to the teacher and reading or studying is equal to 100 units of reading by yourself. Going to the teacher and once in a while is equal to one unit. And going for satsanga on a regular basis is 100 units of that. Then going to satsanga is equal to one unit. And coming for the spiritual camp completely devoted, dedicated only for this is equal to million times unit of that. See, friends, the impact that we have 
is very deep. Here there is no reason for us to get distracted. Because this operation is worse than operating the brain. You all must have known about the brain operations. When brain operations are done, nobody is put into um, anesthesia. They give a little anesthesia just to open the skin about and then that they keep on talking to the person when the brain operation is done. Then they will know when they touch something what is happening. <laughs> Otherwise they will not know. And there is no pain felt in the brain. If you, you, if you touch the brain opening, try. <laughs> you not feel the pain. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyonamaha Hari Om